Hey you guys, this week I promised you to talk about body language and your brand. And by brand, we're talking about branding with photography because obviously you know what I'm doing, right? These are my notes, by the way. I'm cheating or not. It's up to you. <laughs> I don't need to look at this. I know what I'm talking about. Body language and your brand. Okay, so body language as it relates to photography for your brand. You probably heard me say many times that I hate seeing closed body in branding photos. Photos where people cross their hands, cross their legs, like some people, you can't see me right now full body, but some people literally they cross their legs, cross their arms and everything, or, or they hide. Like this is a very closed body language. It shows that you are uncomfortable, you're hiding something, basically some kind of a, some form of a fear. And when we are sensing fear in our opponent or person we're speaking to, we unconsciously feel aggression towards them. This, okay, this sounds like a big deal, it sounds like a lot, but it's true. Fear and aggression come hand in hand. If you are afraid of something, that, 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 that means that, that something can cause you to feel some sense, some sense of anger and aggression. And vice versa, if you're experiencing ag aggression and, and anger, that means you're afraid of something. So closed body language obviously shows that you are afraid, uncomfortable, and that, well, we don't want to portray that, but here's a but. Nowadays, we use photography in various places of your sales funnel, of your website's mechanism, whatever is going on, where you greet people at the door, shake their hands or give them the hug, whatever is on brand for you, in various places of that funnel, you may use different photos to stimulate certain emotions. So I would never say today, never use closed body language in your branding. I would say use it with caution. I would say know what you're doing and then use it with caution. For example, if you're a fitness instructor or you're an attorney, then closed body language is more of a power pose. We are showing off our strength and people come to us to depend on us, to lean on us. And that closed body language is not an aggression towards us, it's an aggression towards our so-called enemy, whoever we are hiring them to help us protect ourselves from right? Or for example, if you're telling a story and on your blog or in your article, you want to stimulate a specific emotion, demonstrate a specific emo emotion and connect with people unconsciously. Again, that closed body language can work for you because it's not you showing something. It's not your headshot. It's not how you greet them at the door, right? So you would never want to put a closed body language photo on the front cover of your website. That's just, it's not a good idea, <laughs> right? But if you're showing it somewhere in the story down the line, then they already know you, they're already warm towards you. And also it's obvious that you are using it as part of the story. Okay, cool. So we spoke about closed body language. I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet and see what's next. I don't remember what I wanted to talk about here. All right, so let's cover the second one. <laughs> I often see take people taking photos like this. So I am projectist, but among photographers, so we have a joke going about this. Uh, different people call it a different way, but um, like I really personally, I can't stand these. And I don't know how you react when you see that. So please let me know in the comments, what do you think of this or of this? Okay. Because when I studied body language, I read about that 
facial support, as I call it, signaling boredom. We do that when we're tired or when we're bored, when we're sitting and somebody is telling a really long story and we're just, we're just tired, you know, our shoulders start hurting, our neck, and we want to support our face. Again, not a great way to greet people on the front cover of your website or the book or whatever, right? It's, and it's also some kind of closed body language. Again, there is something between your heart and, and your audience. However, if you're having a conversation with a friend at a bar, you had a glass, a glass of wine or three each, I don't know what's going on. Sometimes it's, it's, it, we're finding ourselves in this situation where, when we're supporting our face, right? That also can signal intimacy, right? Again, you don't put that on the front. You don't, you don't greet somebody at the door looking like this. Oh, my tooth is hurting. <laughs> but as a part of the story, as an element of intimacy, like you're listening to them, you're having a conversation with them, that might work. I don't know. So I want to know, just because I'm so prejudiced against this, let me know in the comments, what do you think about that pose? Cool. Um, the third one that I didn't know what I wanted to say about, it's like I took these little notes. The third one is the power pose. Power poses. Power pose is somewhere where you're solidly grounded. It's typically a pose that allows you to feel more empowered because your feet are firmly planted on the ground. Both feet on the ground, they're usually widely spread. So you have stability, right? And some people put their hands on their, what is it, hips, waist, somewhere there. <laughs> That is a so-called power pose. Then uh, some people might refer to the power pose as this, and this is great for like thank you pages and wherever you want to communicate a message that you feel empowered or you want them to feel empowered. But again, you don't want to put a power pose on the front cover of your page unless, again, unless that is what you're selling. So you have to be careful with body language. You have to be really aware what each, each um, posture, each movement signals. And because we are processing a lot on our unconscious level, we have to be aware, we as brand builders, we have to be aware what's going on and how we want to portray ourselves in every specific piece of our sales funnel. Cool. I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you like this form of content where I just ramble on. There's no script. And um, what else? Um, yes, let me know about this thing. Oh, and one more tip, obviously. Watch out for this. What does it look like? It looks like I'm punching myself in the chin. I see this so often. I started collecting these pictures. I actually wanted to put together a video of these pictures because it's so funny to me, but then I didn't want to annoy anybody. I mean, um, I'm not here to <laughs> violate anybody. People just don't know. And that's what I'm here. I'm here to educate. Don't do this. Okay. <laughs> Bye.